That was a good burp. Thank you. Have you also been drinking? Or is that no. just natural? No. No, it was just natural. Awesome. I've had like four cups of coffee today, if that, if that I counts. could. I mean, I, I I still have some leftover ale, but I really don't feel like drinking. Drink it. Oh, you know what? I should get the C2 statue and just like, with, with her big fucking ass and just kind of have it sitting on my desk. Oh, the one where she's leaning over the pillar? It, she's got doing the same pose, but like her ass on this statue is like, much bigger than it usually is. Dude, post it. I want to see. Okay, let me go. Let me find my fucking phone. This is a great Jeremiah video. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I'm waiting for you to start it off. You know. I'll, gonna, I'll start it after, after I see the C2S. All right. Should I drink for this video? No, you might as well. Also, please ignore the fact I have a sock over my microphone. Oh damn. Oh jeez. Yeah. Damn, she thick, bro. The ass was fat. Why don't, why don't you two gentlemen introduce yourselves? Alright, uh, I'll go first. My name is Al Saiduk, or Haz, or whatever. Uh, I I like Code Geass. I was in the, the movie video, and Jeremiah is like the best character ever written. Dude, he's in the anything. sickest. He's the best character by far. I'm Daily. I uh, I like Code Geass too. I was also in that, that movie video. Yeah, man. Where he got shafted, am I right? He he got a little bit shafted. I feel like everybody in that movie, except for like the main main yeah. crew, gets a little bit of a shaft. But Jeremiah, especially, I feel like they could have done more with him. Yeah, yeah he I, I, I still have my theory that I I, I said mm -hmm. where he could have just okay. solved the problem with his own Geos power. Yeah, he basically could have. But to be fair, he I. He kind of forgets he has that because he only <laughs> <laughs> forgets. <laughs> I feel like I feel like if Lelouch was like, wait, Geos. He, yeah, he uses it like when he fights Rolo and on Shirley, and that's it. Oh, I like how the Mon, most yeah. the most significant like Gios cancel moment he does just for the fuck of it. Like he's not even intending to get anybody, but he hits Shirley with it, and it like indirectly gets her killed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he does. He did use it on Anya actually. Oh yeah, that's right. He uses it on Anya. Yeah, yeah. He, he just like forgot he has it. Yeah. Right. All right, so we, we've already started talking about, like, the end of the fucking series. Let's start, let's take it back for a second. All right. Um, well, okay, let's talk about him in the beginning, where no one gives a fuck about yeah, him. Yeah, that, that's the interesting thing about Jeremiah, is, like, at the beginning, he's such a, like, he's not a non-character, but he feels like he's of so little significance. He's not even, like, a significant villain. He's, like, he's, like, a sub-boss. He's, like, a side-side villain. Yeah, he feels like the Team Rocket, in a way. <laughs> Yeah, like, basically. And him and Valletta. Yeah, it feels like he'll just kind of, like, be taken care of at some point and then not matter anymore. And it kind of was like that for a while. Like, what? for the first ten episodes. Well, yeah, he's like the first character that Lush really makes a joke of by using his kiosk to just, like, completely screw him over. Yeah. Which it's ruins like... his reputation for, like, most of season one. Yeah, he, he pulls some intense psychological warfare by making shit up. And everyone's... Everyone immediately assumes this dude in a mask is telling the truth. And uh, Jeremiah's reputation hits the shitter because uh, Orange. You don't want them to know about Orange, do you? Tell us about Orange. <laughs> it's just some shit he made up. And it, like, it ruins his career. <laughs> you don't want them to know about Orange, do you? <laughs> it's one of the... Uh, I don't mind the Code Geass stuff, but I will say them calling him Orange Boy is the funniest thing about yeah. the entire yeah. dub. Uh, yeah, so Jeremiah, like, fucks off, and, like, he gets demoted to, like, being just, like, a lackey for a while. Yeah. Tries to jump uh, Lelouch, and Callan uses the Gurren's microwave button. The microwave. Yeah, and he and just gets he, fried. Oh, yeah, he gets fucked. And then he almost gets hit by a car and starts yelling zero and then collapses. And, and that's where you assume that's, like, the end of him. Yeah. Yeah. That's where, like, you would, on, a, on like, a first watching, you'd be like, yeah, okay, he's done. We're not All right, there he again. goes. I, I've read on the wiki. I don't know if this is, like, a confirmed thing because it doesn't have a source. But apparently the plan was, in fact, to just let Jeremiah die there. But he was, like, a mm -hmm. weirdly kind of popular character, so they brought him back. I don't know how true that is, but it, like, sounds plausible. That does. I can see that, because there's, um... Do you mean, like, where they brought him back towards the end of Season 1, or in Season Yeah, like, when they brought him back at the end of Season 1, because right. a apparently the plan was to just let him die. Mm -hmm. See, that that makes a lot of sense, because the way he goes out uh, in, uh, in that episode, it seems like, yeah, we'll never see him again. It, it seems pretty climactic. And then later on, he shows up 
out of fucking nowhere. There is zero build up to him coming back. Uh, pretty much. Like, uh, the scene where he collapses, the, I don't remember his name. What was the name of the general guy that has, like, oh, the fat yeah. face? The one who's always uh, working on the Gia shit? Yeah. I think, Bar yeah, Barkley? I think that's... Barkley. Yeah, Barkley. Shut up and jam Gaiden. Uh, but... Yeah, like, Barkley was in the car that picked him up, so it's not, like, a total out-of-nowhere, like, weird thing, but it does seem like the, the idea was to just let him die there. Mm. Yeah, so... But no, then he gets his own custom mech, which is, like, kind of the best one. Dude, the Siegfried Dude. is probably, my like, my second favorite mech in, like, the entire show. I think the Shinkiro beats it a little bit, mm -hmm. but it's just such a strange thing in the world of Code Geass. Well, yeah, because it's not... Is it even a, um nightmare like is it even a nightmare film? i believe it is classified as a nightmare but it's such a weird kind of offshoot of the idea of what a nightmare even is mm -hmm. like there's no like main control panel or anything he just kind of stands inside of it yeah it's all yeah. like like bio control it's like hooked up to his fucking synapses or something yeah it's fucking weird so uh the britannian the weird uh geos researchers they end up picking them just kind of scraping him off the side of the road and they do some weird experiments on him and make him this they try to make him this weird cyborg uh geos he counter. the coolest redesign ever yeah it's really cool uh but he kind of goes off the deep end when they mention zero and he tries to bust out and does mm -hmm. he yeah. so he takes the siegfried and uh attacks lelouch at the worst possible time for Lelouch, and then gets dunked into the ocean by AC2. And and again, that's like the second point in the series where it's like, yeah, this is this is the last we're going to see of Jeremiah Gottwald. He's yeah, but done. he keeps coming back. Like, one of my favorite things about Code Geass is how it, like, it always feels like the alliances are going to shift, and when you look back at it retroactively, it's like, this is a fucking clusterfuck web of people changing sides and shifting alliances and shit. Oh, yeah, it, it, it's all about, like, yeah, because, I mean, that's where kind of Code Geass gets his, like, it sort of hype is from just like this new crazy, like a new crazy, you know, mech comes out or a new crazy alliance shifts over or like Lelouch's new, like Kikaku just goes, goes nuts. Yeah. There's a and, lot of, and Jeremiah like managed to do that like three times. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like Jeremiah specifically has like two fake out deaths and then changes sides. He's like the last person you would think who would change to Lelouch's side. We haven't even gotten into his, his absolute best moment, which... <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, God. Uh, so, starting from the beginning of Season 2, he starts... Uh, you see this, this like, figure in the opening walking, and it's like, is that Jeremiah? That shot is really cool, by the it way. It is. Yeah. That, that place when the singer's going, I continue to fight, and it's the yeah. raddest shit. Yeah, and you see, yeah. like, it looks like Jeremiah, but he's got, like, even more shit to him, because it shows his, like, uh... His cool like uh arm blade thing yeah, yeah and his yeah. coat and shit mm -hmm. and uh he doesn't really start showing up until later uh he first does he like just kind of show up at uh, uh ashford or does he have yeah something well it, that? well at first it's like him i think he's talking to v2 because v2's group was the one who fixed him up and he's like all right this time i'm gonna get him <laughs> i'm, gonna, I'm, gonna get I'm him. gonna get him that's an exact quote yeah but, it is uh, so he shows up at Ashford looking for Lelouch, uh, finds Rolo and the maid, uh, and beats both of their asses without Which is really any trouble. Because, like, because of Rolo's power, pretty much no one can beat him. Yeah, I lost my shit my first time watching. I know, and, it's the uh, raddest! Uh, so he, abs he, like, bodies Rolo and the maid, whose name yeah. I forget. Oh, Sayoko. Well, Sayoko. Oh, yeah, all he has is a Gias Canceler and a fucking arm blade. Yeah, and he kicks their asses. It's sick. Uh, so he then he goes on the hunt for Lelouch after kind of realizing that he's not there. I don't quite remember what happens when he goes into that train station. So someone else. Well, so yeah, he chases here. after um, Lelouch through this building, and then Lelouch lures him to this like train track area or like subway or metro track, whatever. Which is the same one he used in the end of season one to like uh, you know like cancel the nightmares out, and that works on all his. On all of, like oranges, cybernetics and shit. So, what led him to using the Gios canceler there again? Where? Like when when it ended up affecting Shirley? Like what happened? Oh, he was just going around town using it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I I don't I really don't think there was any greater rhyme or reason. He was just doing it. 
Yeah. The same way, like, for, for no reason, you might just, like, snap your fingers. I mean, he was probably you know? just going around, like, like canceling all of, like, Lucia's... Just GS's... to fuck with him? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, he probably, like, didn't really know all the people Lucia affected with it. So he was just going around just canceling out everyone. Just to cause mayhem? <laughs> yeah, just to fuck with Lelouch. Uh, I mean, so he was he, trying to hunt him down to kill him. Yeah, so j just to make everything Lelouch had built up just kind of fall apart. So, although, although, gotta say now, uh, you know, these events are no longer partially canon. Kind of. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> apparently, according to the movie retellings, which I have not seen. Yeah. I think, it's, I think it is said that those are, like, in a... Yeah, they are separate continuity. But the the current continuity going that's like with the movie and whatever they yeah. do in the future. Um, uh, so yeah, that's the these are the only kind of real change canon. that I recall is this is that like yeah, Shirley does Shirley. still get her memories back though. Yeah, uh, but she just doesn't die. He kind of ha he has Jeremiah on the end of his rope, and then I think it's Lelouch who who says uh, like who he is. And I think it's yeah, he does. He goes on this that. big spiel about how he's doing this for Natalie and to find out who killed his mom. And, and it's like, it's really weird. It's like Lady Marianne. <laughs> what, Marianne? Real shit? Yo, that's my girl. That's what I'm fighting for. Yeah, so guarding uh, Marianne was like Jeremiah's like first ever assignment mm -hmm. in the Britannian army. And the only one he ever gave a shit about, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> Which, by the way, more context. He's part of like the nat like he was basically part of the most like nationalist group in the military of the yeah. Empire. He was part of the the pure bloods, which are like these like pure like anything that's not Britannian they despise group. Yeah. Yes. Uh. So after Marianne was killed, he kind of never really got over it, and he had been like trying to investigate it because he didn't believe it was just terrorists that killed her. Uh. And so when he finds out who Lelouch is, he immediately does a. Fucking instantly. Yeah. Doesn't like, give a no shit that he humiliated him several times, almost killed him. Yeah, no and all that. He's he like, oh, I get it. Jer this, Jeremiah... this, attempt to this attempt to destroy the country I serve was for a dead lady that I was working for like 20 years ago. Jeremiah I got you. is loyalty. Dude, he is loyalty <laughs> incarnate. Like, to an autistic amount. He is a, a loyal man. Yeah. He is so incredibly loyal to Marianne's memory that he betrayed his entire country and the people who brought him back to life twice. And pretty much becomes Lelouch's, like, number two man. Yeah, he he, he's like his number personal. three man, but behind Suzaku, at least. Yeah, after that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. he becomes Lelouch's But that was before uh, Suzaku even did this. Yeah, I like when, all, when he, like, introduces him to the rest of the Black Knights, and they're like, dude, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, what? Why? Why? <laughs> But, I mean, he, you know, he proves himself. When they go to slaughter all of those I mean, Geos children, he, he does it. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's excited. He's like, oh, Marianne hated Geos. Like, uh, Orange so, is color of his loyalty. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good line. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anytime, whenever, who was it that tried to call him Orange at some point? I don't even. It wasn't. It wasn't. Um, what's her name? No, it wasn't. Uh, memory girl. It was. It was not Anya. No. No. But I, it, was, I, it was like it was. It was sometime before that scene. Like trying to call him Orange is an insult, and uh, in his mind, he's completely turned around the name Orange to be a sign of how loyal he is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just some shit he invented. Like we used to fuck with him. And now he's he wears it as a badge of honor. <laughs> And, like, uh, Lelouch is totally down for it because Orange is Jeremiah's caller ID, which is great. Uh, it's a pet name. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's, my, it's a good little orange boy. Uh. So, uh, Jeremiah pretty much sticks by Lelouch for the in, for the rest of Code Geass. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, and he does, uh, like, all, like, all of his fucking, like, pretty much everything he has to do. Yeah. He's really the only person who stays completely loyal to Lelouch from then on. That and, like, I mean, his maid. Like. Yeah, and her. And yeah, her. actually, Sayoko, I think, is, like, the, the exception to the rule. I'm pretty sure she sticks with him the whole time. Yeah. yeah she, it, uh, it's weird, because she works for Zero while serving Lelouch before he she even knows who Lelouch yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. And then she's like, oh, wow, you are Zero, too. Alright, this, this worked out. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, alright. And it, I, he doesn't really do anything like exceptionally significant up until the up until big, the end, up until the final fight against. Actually, Seisel. before we get to that, I want to talk about how not as cool the Sutherland Sieg is compared to the Siegfried. Oh yeah, 
All right. So the Siegfried is like the coolest raddest shit ever. And then the Sutherland Sieg is just like the same thing, but turned into a rectangle. And it's not nearly as cool, man. Absolutely not. I, I agree 100%. The Siegfried is like this weird... It's like the black sheep of all of the mechs in Code Geass. Yeah. And then the Sutherland Sieg is like uh, the same thing, but less creative looking. Yeah, it's got a Sutherland as like its cockpit, so... Yeah, that's kind of it, cool. it almost feels like more like a weird accessory to the Sutherland than it is its own mech. Yeah, it reminds me of how in the movies they have those like those big nightmare yeah. armors. Yeah. It's kind of like that. Dude, uh, he needs to get one of those to put on top of the Sutherland Sieg. <laughs> that's just like the Siegfried again. <laughs> it's just double the size of the regular Siegfried. So, yeah, I don't think he does anything too significant up until the fight against Schneisel and the Black Knights. Yeah. Where he uh, ends up fighting, he ends up like tearing through a huge chunk of the Black Knights because Jeremiah is a monster. Yeah, it's crazy how outnumbered like Lelouch actually is. Yeah. Uh, well, outnumbered and just like... Outgunned, really. Well, yeah, when one has like actual nukes. Yeah. Yeah, pretty <laughs> much. Like Schneisel has the Flayas, he's got the fucking Damocles, he's got the whole Black Knights, he's got like a couple of the fucking Knights of the Round... And then, like, what does Lelouch have? He has, he's got Suzaku, he's got Jeremiah. I, he's like, got, I think that's about it. He's got like C2, the, who's not a good pilot. Yeah, he's got C2, who's got this shitty pink Lancelot. With this shield. Yeah. And, it, and he's he's got the, uh... He's got the, the Shinkiro. And he's got Lloyd's tech, like, Lloyd on, on tech support. Yeah. yeah, and he has, like, a lot in the Britannian army, who he's kind of strong-armed. Who he's yeah, brainwashed. No one with yeah. the face, so, you know. Yeah, they don't... They're, they're not, not important. Armed. Actual Ken fighter to like stop the nukes. Yeah, that's... <laughs> he's... yeah. He sends a couple of them like just straight to their deaths to yeah. stop nukes. <laughs> yeah. Or no, sorry. Uh, Jeremiah ends up facing off with Anya, and uh, she damages the Siegfried enough that he comes out in the Sutherland. Wait, look, yeah. It, I gotta point out they're they're like thousands of feet in the air. Yeah, he leapt out of the Sutherland, landed on her cockpit. And pointed his fucking sword arm at her. And he said the most metal line in the whole show. It's the most baller shit. He says, memorize this. <laughs> memorize Jeremiah Gottwald. He beat Anya in the most fucking over-the-top baller way possible. Yeah. And then when she mentions that she, uh, that her memories like don't work, he's like, wait a second. It's like, oh, oh, the I power that does something about that. <laughs> Man, this would have been useful. And he uses it on her. To erase Charles, uh, Charles's brainwashing from her, and then he kind of just fucks off. And... And, the, and the best thing of all, his last scene, he's on an orange farm. He is on an orange farm. Wait, we we skip something. We skip the uh, the fucking zero killing. Yeah, Lelouch. Like, dude, fucking Jeremiah was the guy oh. at Lelouch's side as like seemingly his new like not necessarily his knight of zero, but his new like the guy seemingly in charge of the army. Um, yeah, yeah, so I was, I was, or Andre, I was messing to the wiki, and one of his ranks is highest ranking general. Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> dude, that's sick. But he was also, comp he was also one of the people in on the Zero Requiem, so he kind of just let Suzaku slide by. Yeah, like, think about how tight-lipped of a secret that was. It was like, Suzaku Lelouch, C2 presumably knew about it, and Jeremiah. Yeah. Like, I'm pretty sure that was it. And well, Shirley. Well, they got Rick on the Shir Shirley and, uh... In the sequels, but other than that, oh, yeah. really? Yeah, because yeah. he knew about it. She's I need to who... watch those movies. Sometime. She's like the one that dragged. She's the one that dragged his body. No joke. Yeah, Lil... <laughs> yeah, Lil... yeah. Her and Jeremiah like drag his body away and hide it. <laughs> okay, me and Lulish are about to head out. <laughs> We're in the corpse of the emperor. <laughs> like... It's just a. It's just a shot of Lulish's empty throne with blood on it. <laughs> <laughs> also, the fucking line he says when like. Uh, Suzaku steps on him and uses him as a platform as the Radis. He goes onwards, mass <laughs> knight, with his big dumb smile on his face. <laughs> oh man, yeah. So he was uh, in on the Zero Requiem, in on Lelouch getting killed. He's so loyal to this guy that when Lelouch says, "Yeah, I have to die," he lets him do it. Say, like, "All right, I got you, B. I got you." So after uh, Lelouch dies, in, uh, in quotes. Uh, he goes and becomes an orange farmer with Anya. He becomes a fucking redneck. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, in the movie continuity, I think, like, C2 and Lelouch kind of chilled at Jeremiah's for a while before... Oh, really? 
yeah, I think she mentions that they were hanging out with Jeremiah for a while, but then she, but then they head out to go look for uh, other ways into uh, into Sea's world. Imagine like retard Lelouch trying to pick fucking oranges, <laughs> and Jeremiah's just like, I'm I'm so proud of you. <laughs> he like like barely swipes at it and like misses, and he like, like punches the orange, and he's like, Well done, sir. Oh, good job. <laughs> You did it. <laughs> Very good. This is my lord. Ah, he punches it and the orange falls off the tree. He's like, you did it. You picked it. And I'd like to go into further detail about what he does in the movie. But yes. the most of what he does is uh, bringing some oranges to a party and yeah, then fucking much. off. <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. And, and like, he like went through like like heavy gunfire to like give Lelouch news like near the end. I don't remember that in the movie. Because like Lelouch was like pinned down and like he just comes out of nowhere. It's like, oh, yeah, this is what's happening. That, uh, uh, everyone in the movie who got shafted, I was the most upset about Jeremiah. Well, he didn't, yeah, get, a, he didn't even get a cool fight because everyone else at least got a fight. Cornelia, um, fucking like, Cornelia got more than he did. Do you know how upset that makes me? I mean, her shit yeah, was. Cool, I mean, though. he doesn't get the like the Omega shaft the way that certain other characters do. Like Anya, like she doesn't fight, does she? No. Yeah, so like he, I think he gets it a little bit better than others. Like he's in a mech, he's doing stuff. Like he's an active part of the story. Yeah, I mean, he's someone's, in it. Someone's got to watch the orange for him. Yeah, man. yeah. Jeremiah, he doesn't really do much in the movie, but uh, in the main series, he like absolutely steals the show anytime he's on screen. It's always weird whenever you have those characters, uh, especially in like Jeremiah's case, where they kind of start out as a complete shitter. And then end up being like one of the best characters for some reason. Yeah, like with Jeremiah especially, you got to think this guy went from like seemingly just some kind of villain of the week, like side character sort of dude, to onward masked knight. Yeah, he he goes he he starts out as like being the first kind of hurdle for Lelouch to get over, and uh, then he's the last hurdle for Suzaku to get over. <laughs> it's like it's like poetry, quite dude. literally. <laughs> yeah, he, he goes. But he, he sort of starts out as sort of a nothing character. And by the end of it, he's one of the most relevant characters in the story. Yeah. And uh, it's it's really weird, but I fucking love it. He's, he's almost like a weird microcosm of what Code Geass is because of like how the way his alliances shift and the weird fucking... Just the, the reasons why he decides to join Lelouch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's also he, he, like, he is one of the most Code Geass characters there is. Yeah, I mean, definitely. He, he gets a super transformation. He gets two or th oh, three different uh, mechs, kind of. Yeah, he's... Uh, of all the of all the characters who have that like weird Code Geass style of writing, uh, Jeremiah is easily the most fun to watch. Oh, for sure. Because he's just like... It's like, why would you have expected this pompous, racist asshole to end up being a super-powered cyborg on Lelouch's side. And not only on Lelouch's side, but the most ferociously loyal, like, of anybody that has ever existed. Yeah, it's absurd. Like, he he's so insanely loyal to Lelouch that he dropped any patriotism he had just to side <laughs> with Lelouch. Yeah, like, like, can you imagine if, like, Rivals had, like, some like, dramatic change like that and he became, like, <laughs> like, like an old fit knight or something? Like, it's, <laughs> it, it's almost on that level. It's about there, yeah. Especially because like the way he starts out, he's uh, like you see him, and it's al he's almost like a joke, in a way. Like L Lelouch makes a complete joke of him, and anytime you see him like drinking alone in a bar, or getting pissy just seeing Lelouch, like it's it's almost like yeah, look at this racist asshole. Laugh at how absurdly evil he is. And then in season two, they were, they just stopped doing that. Yeah, it, it, like it's interesting seeing how like him and Valletta seemed like they were just these these nobodies, and then it's like yeah, Jeremiah is Lucia's most loyal guy ever, and Valletta is pregnant with Ogie's kid. And Valletta's also like um, one of the big reasons the Lush got fucked up. I mean, I think we already said it, but I mean, it's very Code Geass. It is very Code Geass. It's a weird show. It's probably it's probably the most entertaining piece of work piece of fiction like ever created. Oh yeah, that's where I stand. Like it's it's so entertaining. Yeah, like, I, I think I I've rewatched watch. Code Geass more than like any other show. I, I can't like stop watching it whenever I rewatch it. Like I, I'll finish it in like three days. I yeah. watched the entirety of Code Geass when I was house sitting. Uh, like, mm -hmm. uh, I had to house sit for my aunt over a span of two days, and it uh, the the night I got in, I started to rewatch Code Geass, 
And by the time she got home, I was on the last episode. Yeah. Hell, hell even better, I was showed it to my friend, and he, we started season one that night. I went, I fell asleep, and when I woke up, I was watching, he was ro- like watching the Zero Requiem. He had it slept. Oh, dude, Code Geass is the best show to watch with a friend for like the first time. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Like whenever Nina was on screen, uh, I would all, I would just like silently chuckle to myself, and he'd look at me like, why are you laughing? Wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll see. <laughs> and I insisted whenever he was, we were watching, and he's like, I hate this Jeremiah guy. I was like, please give him, give him time. You'll become the best character. Dude, Kill Geass is great because you can just fuck with people and be like, yeah, don't don't worry about him. He's like, he's gone. Yeah. He's a, mi- he a pretty minor character. Yeah, no, like I, I was like, I was like insistent that I really liked Jeremiah and he thought I was fucking with him. <laughs> <laughs> it's the big brain play. I fuck with him by not fucking with him. Anyway, yeah, Jeremiah, the best character, Code Geass. Yeah, Jer- he's definitely my favorite Code Geass character. I don't know if I said that, but... He, yeah, he's, he's absolutely mine. Yeah, from a, from a badass like Spectrum, yeah, he, he's mine. I mean, Lelouch, Lelouch is also just like he's the most inter- like Lelouch is like you know as the main character and he does like more awesome shit like in total, but like per capita, Jeremiah Jeremiah is the best. Yeah, I think the thing about Jeremiah that I like the most is that pretty much any time he's on the screen, I have a grin on my face. Oh yeah, <laughs> like when he's being the like racist hotshot villain he's just kind of fun to watch and then when he comes back he just keeps getting more entertaining the longer he's in the show and it's kind of magical it's just this weird escalation that pretty much like all of code geass kind of does where things just get more and more insane yeah uh, it's the episode. it's the escalation of him that's just so incredible it's like how did we get from yeah he's racist and uh all hail britannia to i'm a cyborg knight and i can cancel Gios and i'm the most loyal to lelouch ever because i liked his mom and there's a mech in my mech and yeah <laughs> and i'm gonna blow it up twice <laughs> and i'm perfectly fine leaping from said mech just to kill someone <laughs> Just to win a fight, really. What the fuck was he gonna do, like, after... <laughs> like... <laughs> I don't think he thought that through super well. Like, I'm pretty sure you see him and he, the mech's just kind of floating in midair. Yeah, <laughs> I imagine after he's like, uh, yeah, so can you land this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> land <I don't> now. <laughs> you just bring this down over by, uh, yeah, the station. That, thanks. <laughs> Look, he's the most loyal man, not the most intelligent. Yeah. Okay. He doesn't have the best critical thinking skills. He, he, he really doesn't. He's not the, the smartest man alive. He's not a very smart guy. He has these, like, sick arm sword things that make no sense, but they're awesome, so... Oh, they're like an arm blade thing. Remember, he's an assassin. <laughs> he's he's, he's an the ass- worst assassin that has ever lived. <laughs> the way he lists his occupation as assassin. Okay, so his strategy to assassinate someone is walk up to their front door. <laughs> yes basically yeah yeah remember when he just straight up like attacked those two fucking cops <laughs> or the security guards or whatever they were like yeah. he just nails them so he, he is uh look he's not a very skilled assassin uh i think he's very skilled he beat rollo who is the best assassin there but is he cheated okay. he cheated to do that okay, he had the look, fucking kiosk he... cancel but rollo <laughs> cheats with his kiosk <laughs> yeah okay. i know uh but there's nothing else jeremiah is about with, among the myriad of other things he's not very good at he is loyal yeah i mean that's all you need in life yeah get you get you a girl who loves you like jeremiah does oh fuck dude that's the dream <laughs> i want a girl who can fucking kiosk cancel dude Catherine. but it's like your options are Catherine and jeremiah got one Je- <laughs> 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 just looking at you like that <laughs> <laughs> I mean, fuck, dude. Who needs a woman when you have Jeremiah Gautwell? Hell yeah, man. Yeah, so, Jeremiah is the sickest, my favorite Code Geass character. He's just the bestest. I love him so much. He's a he's a cute little orange boy, and I... Oh, he's so cute. I, I really mm-hmm. hope that in whatever Code Geass shit comes out in the coming years... Dude, he... if they make, like, an R3, like, dog, Jeremiah needs to be a central figure. Or he else better fucking be. I, I like, will... the whole thing they were talking about at the end of Lelouch of the Resurrection was, like, how they're gonna hunt down Gios people that aren't worthy of having Gios. Who else would you bring? But yeah, <laughs> Jeremiah is, like, the man for that. There is not a better person person to bring along for that at all. 
That is what he was built to do. <laughs> Literally. Orange boy. Oh, orange? <laughs> That's another really good line. Yeah. Christman Freeman is really fucking good as Jeremiah. He is awesome. Him, um, and just like Lucius voice, and Johnny's a couple other that are like that make the make the dub like really stand out. Commit it to memory. 